Hello and welcome to this deep dive into SMTP archiving in Enterprise Vault 1101. My name is Phil Walters and I'm a consultant working for a company called Adeptech. So before we get into the detail, let's just remind ourselves the architecture of SMTP archiving, which we covered in previous videos. So the way it works is that when we have switched on SMTP archiving, what we get is an SMTP service on the Enterprise Vault server, which is listening on a standard TCP port such as TCP port 25. The SMTP traffic coming, for instance, from our exchange server, i.e. our journaled emails, will be received by the SMTP service. The emails are then placed in a holding folder, so you need to define a holding folder. They're placed into folders based on the date and time and their EML files. The archiving task will then process those emails, so it's running all the time, and it does it according to the targets that are set up. So you look in the top right hand corner, you can see we've got three targets. So if it sees an email sent to evsmtp1 at example.com, they'll be placed into the evsmtp1 archive according to the policy that you've set. So that's a standard way that archiving works, but let's look at a couple of other ways that we can do it. So the first one is selective SMTP journaling. Here the administrator can target just certain email addresses. And you can put those archived emails into one or, or several archives. So a use case for this would be that we've got 10 users in the sales department and we put, want to put all the archived emails into one sales archive. So we can do that with this feature. It's very important to understand you must still configure a target address for the envelope address. What I mean by the envelope address is that is the address that the journaled emails are being sent to out of Exchange. So we still need to configure that, even though we don't actually configure it for archiving. And if you look at the demo, you'll see how that works. You also need to enable a selective SMTP journaling in the site properties. By default, this is on. So let's look at an example. So all the email messages are coming out of Microsoft Exchange and being sent via a connector to the Enterprise Vault server. All those emails are being sent to the journal address, journal at evsmtp.local. Those messages will be received in the holding folder as normal. But notice in this case, the target, the SMTP target, journal at evsmtp.local, does not have archiving enabled. So the target exists, but there's no archiving switched on. And we have SMTP targets for three users. And for each of those targets, the emails are going to be archived into the sales archive. The second option, which is subtly different, is SMTP mailbox journaling. In this case, it archives sent and received messages for users in a personal archive. So in this case, there's a one-to-one -one mapping between target address and archive. And what you do in the SMTP policy is configure it to discard the journal report. So let's look at this. It looks very similar to the previous diagram. The difference here, though, is that we have targets for A. Jones and J. Adams, but notice that now the emails are being placed into individual archives, which could be mailbox archives or SMTP archives for A. Jones and J. Adams. Another thing you can do is to use X headers to configure SMTP archiving. Remember, X headers are extra properties added to an SMTP message. Lots of different programs can add X headers, but one example is to use Microsoft Exchange using a transport rule to add X headers to emails. So there are two things that we can do with X headers in Enterprise Vault SMTP archiving. The first one is we can index information held in X headers. And the second thing is that SMTP archiving can act on specific X headers. So these are the X headers that are used by Enterprise Vault. So if it sees any of these X headers in the email, it will act according to the description here in this table. So for instance, if it sees the XKVS archive ID, it will try and archive the message 
into the archive ID specified in the X header. Likewise with the retention category, using the retention category ID, we can assign a different retention category from the one that's specified in the target address. For the original location X header, we can put it into a different folder than the inbox folder, which is the default. Message type can override the value of the vault.msg type property. This is particularly useful for using with Discovery Accelerator, and we can change it to say Bloomberg, IM, or whatever. Index data allows you to add one or more properties to the index using an XML file. It's very important that we size our SMTP archiving servers properly, and there are benchmark figures in the Enterprise Vault Performance Guide for 1101. So you can see that, uh, for instance, with an 8-core server with 16 gig of RAM, and with an average message size of 70 kilobytes, we can archive 120,000 items per hour, which is pretty good. So what sort of process should we go through if we want to size our SMTP archiving servers? So the first thing we need to do is estimate the number of journal emails per day. And we could do this maybe by switching on journal archiving and exchange and do it to an email address to start with and look at the number of emails in that mailbox. We also need to estimate the average size of emails. And from that, we can calculate the number of EV servers required using the table that you can see in the slide. Here's some performance and sizing tips. So first of all, always use fast disk storage for SMTP holding folder, typically 300 IOPS or above. So SAN or direct attached storage will be good. Don't use fast browsing for SMTP journal archives. Use the storage queue for the properties in your vault store for SMTP archiving for maintaining the safety copy. It's also worth noting that the index sizes are calculated 9% of the original message volume archived. This compares with 12% for ordinary journal, exchange journal archiving, which uses the um, MAPI message instead of EML files. You can also configure the number of item processor threads. In Enterprise Vault 1101, the number of item process threads defaults to twice the number of CPU cores in the Enterprise Vault server. In EV12, it defaults to three times the number of CPU cores. Now you can't change the number of threads in the properties of the archiving task. You need to go into the task table in the directory database and there is a column number of threads that you need to change. You'll notice in the screenshot it's set to zero, which means it's using the default value. You should never increase it to more than four times the number of CPU cores. Also, if the number's greater than 50, it'll be ignored. One other thing, you should take into account whether storage and indexing are running locally on the Enterprise Vault server before increasing the number of item processor threads. You don't want to have the situation where you have lots and lots of threads allocated to archiving, but not enough allocated to storage and indexing, because that will cause bottlenecks in those processes. There are a number of reporting tools for SMTP archiving. First of all, there's the task summary and error log files, which we will find in the Enterprise Vault Reports directory under SMTP. So the error log files obviously report any errors. The task summary report just gives you the raw data of the number of messages that's been archived in that period. There are performance counters that are useful for identifying things like bottlenecks, the number of items archived per hour and so on. And there is a SCOM pack that includes monitors for SMTP archiving. In terms of configuring, logging and reporting, if you go to the task properties of the SMTP archiving task, you can change the number of reports to keep and the maximum report size for the error log file. It is possible to use dtrace as well, and there are a number of dtrace scripts that are now available in the new trace dialog. So for instance, SMTP archiving issues is probably the most useful one. And you can see a list of the processes that it uh, will monitor. 
Finally, troubleshooting. So if the EV SMTP service fails to start, the thing to do is to check if there aren't any other applications listening on the same TCP port. If the SMTP service settings are not being applied to any other EV server, check network connectivity. If the other EV server then becomes accessible because you've changed something, restart the admin service to sync the SMTP settings. If mails are not received in the holding folder, verify that the target email addresses are configured correctly, that the holding folder is configured and accessible. Also verify the SMTP server settings and check the event view. If mails are being received but not being archived, even if everything is configured correctly, restart the SMTP archiving task. If you make any changes to configuration, you do need to restart that task. Finally, of course, check out the error log files. So what would be really good now is to check out the two demonstrations that follow this presentation, which are also available. So the first one is looking at selective SMTP archiving. And the second one is using X headers with SMTP archiving. So I hope you found this video interesting. Thank you very much.